I've been shooting video on my iPhone to uh, get this YouTube channel up and running for a couple of weeks and I've been running into technical issues trying to get uh, photos and videos to download from my iPhone onto my PC which has held me up and been quite a frustration. There have been hours on the phone with tech support and uh, no good solutions. Uh, I don't know if anybody is running into the same problem, but what I was finding was that when I tried to download files from the phone to the PC through the Photos app, it would occasionally download some and then just stop recognizing the device. So I finally found a solution today. I took my whole computer over to Best Buy, talked to the Geek Squad. They didn't have a solution and so I asked them, well, isn't there like a thumb drive that you can connect directly to the iPhone and then load the photos and videos from that thumb drive directly onto the PC, therefore bypassing USB cables and interface between the Apple product and the PC product. And uh, sure enough, they said, yeah, we've got something like that. And there it is right there. Has the lightning cable attachment that goes into the phone, USB thumb drive goes into the computer. And that right there is your SanDisk I expand 128 gigabyte thumb drive. Well, I tried this out and it worked like a charm. I can even load video directly onto the thumb drive and never even save it on the on the iPhone itself. So if you're having a similar issue, there's a link to this little widget. It's about 45 bucks in the description of this video. And with that little deal right there, we're ready to go live with Radical Gastronomy TV. Let's do it. What is radical gastronomy? Well, shortly after the crash from the derivatives bubble in 07, 08, I started looking around at how the world was working. And I'd never really been a big fan of the systems of our society. And around that same time, I read Michael Pollan's Omnivore's Dilemma. And I began to realize that there was something wrong with our entire way of thinking about providing for ourselves. Sit down. Sit. And I thought about the food system. And having been a professional chef, for 22 years, the subject was uh, definitely near and dear to my heart. And I decided that it was uh, important to grow my own food for my family, for my loved ones, that what was on offer in the marketplace was simply unacceptable. Not only not nutritious, but actually poisonous, detrimental to us. So that began a long adventure into self-sufficiency. And my wife and I, we sold the house that she owned when we got married, and we bought 40 acres in the mountains. 
and we were planning to build an earth bag house off grid at about 8,000 feet. The process of going through permitting and all the bureaucracy to get that project done proved more than we could bear. And I realized that it wasn't just the food supply and the financial system that was corrupt, but it was every aspect of government all the way down to the local level. When we realized that project wasn't gonna work, we sold that land and we bought this uh, five acre farm here on the high plains of Colorado. Now, Hocktail Farm is surrounded by GMO corn and soy farmers, and more immediately by sand pits. You might be able to hear the heavy machinery operating in the background. The one nice thing about these sand pits is it gives me a buffer from all of the uh, spraying that goes along with farming genetically modified commodity crops. But on a daily basis, this time of year, it's the end of July, there's a crop duster that flies over and he's essentially committing chemical warfare on all of nature with what he's doing. He doesn't realize it, but that's what's actually going on. So the goal was to take what would be considered non-arable land on this five acre farm and produce all of our own food. So the, the five acres is sitting on about 60 feet of nothing but sand. There's almost no organic matter in the quote unquote soil. So we've had to build all of that. With the help of these grazing animals and their manure, we're able to build compost and through no-till agricultural methods, permaculture methods, and a lot of other strategies, we're able to produce about 90% of our own food. It's a very complicated algorithm. It's not an easy thing to do. It certainly isn't convenient, but what we get on the reward side of that is we get to eat the most amazing, beautiful, nutritious, unadulterated food. And we make all the decisions about the inputs. There are no antibiotics, there's no soy, there's no genetically modified food, there's no Roundup or glyphosate. And we're just on the adventure of trying to find the balance that makes this all function. So that's the adventure that we're going on with Radical Gastronomy on YouTube. I want to share with you not only how we produce our food, but how we prepare it, how we store things for the winter. We've got a fairly short growing season here. We're in zone 5B. And so what we produce during these warm months of summer has to somehow be preserved that we have something to eat in February. So those are the sort of things that we're going to discuss on this channel. And of course, there'll be lots of baby animals and dogs drinking goat milk. But I'll try to share what knowledge I've gathered in this adventure of going from just being another guy working construction at that time to being a full-time farmer, blogger, and now YouTuber. So thank you guys for coming along for the ride. Be sure to subscribe. Turn on that bell for notifications if you want to know when I put a new video up. Leave some comments. I'm very happy to answer questions about what we're doing here. There's a lot of information. So let's start a dialogue, form a community, help each other out. Have a great day.